Hello everyone and welcome to this video and this new series about oil painting. I have gotten lots of comments over the years on my TikTok and Instagram about my oil painting process and just general information about oil painting. And all of that can be found online, but it's sometimes hard to know where to look. And so I wanted to create this new series just to give you all of the information that I know um, and pass that along to you so that you can feel like oil painting is not quite as intimidating as it might feel at first. Um, so today we're going to go over materials, proper storage, and cleanup of oil paint. So it's going to be a little bit more of an administrative video today, but still all good things to know, especially if you're new to oil painting. And then in the next videos, we will go over more things like different techniques of oil painting, um, different kinds of landscapes. I, I'm mostly a landscape painter, so that's what I'm going to be focused on, but different types of palettes, different color schemes that you can use, all of that jazz. So those will be, you know, more interactive videos, but this one will be here for you to refer to if you need to know what materials to start with and how to kind of handle your oil paints at home. So the first thing and the most obvious thing that we're going to talk about is your paint. So I have, this is my entire collection here laid out just for you. Um, I've collected a lot of these colors kind of over the years. I don't necessarily use all of them in every painting. I do have big a big tube of titanium white. I do recommend doing this if you are getting into oil painting. It's just easier. White is the color that you're going to use the most. I also use a lot of ultramarine blue in my painting, so I have a big tube of that. Blick is a good brand if you're starting out. I still use it. I'm a professional artist and I still use it. Each of these smaller tubes is three to five dollars, so it's not a huge investment to start out with. Um, and you don't need to buy all of these colors. So as we get started here, I'm going to give you a couple of options for some smaller palettes that will get you started um, in painting and will give you every color and options to mix every color that you need without needing to buy 20 tubes of paint. Okay, so if you're just starting out with oil painting and you want just the bare bones minimum amount of oil paints that you need to get started and paint a majority of things, here's what I would recommend. Uh, titanium white, for sure. That will be included in all of these palettes. You definitely need white. Cadmium yellow hue. This is a good medium sort of golden yellow color. It will mix a lot with a lot of things and make a lot of different colors, greens, oranges, all of that stuff. Alizarin crimson. This is a very cool toned uh, red, so it's more towards the uh, purple side rather than the orange side, and it'll mix with that cadmium uh, yellow. Cobalt blue, this is kind of a neutral blue color that'll mix well with those two. And then raw umber, which is a cool toned brown. And that will mix with, you can mix all four of these together and get a pretty close to a black color. So you will need to know your color mixing if you go with such a limited palette here but you will be able to mix most of the colors that you would need. Obviously, if you wanna get a bigger range of colors, you need to add in some more tubes of paint, but if you're just getting started, this is a good option for you. And then if you're looking to expand your palette a little bit from here, what you can do is add a different version of each of the primary colors, and that will give you even more options for color mixing. You can mix the other ones together and get even more color options. So what I would recommend adding is yellow ochre. This is more of a kind of golden, uh, earthy yellow color. I love this color a lot, it's really pretty. I would add a cadmium red. This is a red that's closer to orange while this one was closer to purple, so you get those two options there. I would add phthalo blue. This is a more uh, warm toned blue than this one. So this one is closer to yellow, closer to green, um, and so that one adds the difference there. And then I would also add in sap green. I like to mix a lot of green I do a lot of landscapes, so it's kind of helpful to just have a green um, to use in there. This is the one I would recommend the most. This palette of nine colors, I would recommend this the most, um, and then you can kind of add from there. So the other colors I would recommend adding are uh, eventually, when you feel like you need to or want to. Buff Titanium, this is really good for lightening colors in more of an earthy way. Titanium white can be a little bit harsh if you use it to lighten colors a lot. Uh, burnt Sienna is a great earthy orange color. It's great for toning canvases and it's also great for adding into greens to kind of neutralize them. Magenta is always a good color to have, especially if you like to paint bright things, sunsets, that kind of stuff. I love this turquoise color for oceanscapes. Always good to add another green. This one's a little bit darker and a little bit more blue toned, so that's helpful. Burnt Umber is a warm brown, so compared to raw umber, which is a cool brown, it's good to have both. And then Payne's Gray is just a good option for a dark color that is not black. I don't really like to use black in my palettes. Um, I find it kind of dulls things down, but Payne's Gray is a good option. And then Ultramarine Blue is always a good option as well. I love Ultramarine Blue. So 
once you're kind of into oil painting and really want to start adding more colors, you can just kind of build up your collection. These tubes last quite a while and um, you can kind of build it up from there. And then one more thing I do want to mention is the general safety of oil paint. Um, I think there's kind of a reputation of oil paint that it is unsafe or toxic to humans. Um, and I do just want to say there are some materials that you can work with that are not good to inhale or have on your skin. Paint is not one of those things. Um, obviously you shouldn't really have this on your skin. It's just not that good for your skin and you can absorb some of the pigments through your skin. So some artists wear gloves. I don't bother. I just try to keep my hands off of the paints. Um, but these are made of pigment and uh, safflower oil or linseed oil, all of which are natural materials. Um, there's no petroleum or anything in there. And then oftentimes they will have this AP label, which is non-toxic. So they're at least labeled as non-toxic. Um, they do have a smell. It is the linseed oil smell. Um, I think it smells good, but some people don't really like the smell. So that's kind of a, a personal thing. Um, so you should not be eating them. You should not be touching them too much. It's okay if you get a little on your skin and you just wipe it off or wash it off. It does stain your clothing. So just be careful. Don't wear anything you like. And then don't sand it down and inhale the particles. <laughs> That's the only kind of unsafe thing that you could do. And then while we have our paints out here, we're gonna talk about what you're gonna put your paints on while you're working. Um, so you'll need a palette. At the art store, they will have lots of options from uh, disposable palettes, which is basically pieces of wax paper that you would mix your colors on. I use those for a while. Um, they will have glass palettes. They will have plastic palettes. What I recommend is that you go to the hardware store. They have pieces of glass for sale there um, that are, this one is I think eight by 10 or something like that, maybe a little bigger. Uh, and I just glued it to the piece of cardboard that it came with. I painted this cardboard gray and I glued it to the piece of cardboard and this is my palette. It's just a piece of glass. Um, and I put my colors here on the top. You can see it's a mess right now. And then I mix them down here at the bottom. We'll go over that a little bit later, but save yourself some money. You do not need a fancy glass palette from the art store. Go to the hardware store and get a piece of plexiglass or just regular glass. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is brushes. You will need some oil painting brushes. There are several that you can find online or at the art store. They will be labeled uh, oil painting brushes or mixed media brushes. The reason that you'll need oil painting brushes specifically is that they are relatively stiff. So you can see that one's kind of glued together, but once I get it loosened up, it's pretty stiff. I'm pressing on it pretty hard. And the reason is oil paint is very thick. And so to get it onto the palette, to mix it up on your palette and to get it onto your painting, you need the brush to be equally stiff so that you can really press that paint onto the palette. So I'd recommend just getting a few brushes, a few larger, a few smaller. I really like flat brushes. I like a smaller round brush. I really like this uh, liner brush for details here. Um, just get like, you know, three or four brushes in, in varying sizes, just depending on what you like to use. Um, other options for you, filbert uh, shape is good, this kind of rounded shape. Um, you can get an even long, even bigger flat brush like this one. Another thing I would recommend is a watercolor brush. So this is an oval mop brush, one inch brush. Uh, it is from Princeton as well. These brushes are from Princeton. That's one of my favorite brush brands. And the, you can see that this is so much fluffier and softer than those brushes were. And the reason that we have one of these is to blend the paint while it's on the canvas. So once I've put the paint on the canvas and I want to blend it together, which oil paint can do very well because it stays wet for so long, this really soft brush allows you to get those really, really soft blends. So once you're getting into landscapes and stuff like that, or you just want some blends, I would recommend getting a large watercolor brush. The last thing you'll need implement wise are some palette knives. Uh, you can start with just one. This one is one I've had for a long time. This is the one I use the most and palette knives are super useful for mixing your colors. I don't really like to mix my colors with the brushes because the pigment kind of gets stuck in the bristles here and it's hard to mix an entire um, you know, mound of color just with a brush. So I like to use a palette knife, scrape off whatever pigments you wanna add in there, and then you can mix it all together with the palette knife. Um, I can't even tell you what size this one is, but it's kind of a medium sized one. I just recently got this small one for some little details. And then I have this large one that I don't really use that often because I don't work that big. But if you have a bigger painting, you can do that to mix larger amounts of color. And you can also use these to scrape the color onto a canvas. Um, those are more impasto or uh, impressionistic effects, but you can certainly do that. Um, so that's kind of what I got this one in mind for, was to use it to scrape paint onto a canvas. 
Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about are mediums and solvents. These are things that you add to your oil paint to change them in some way. Um, so there are several different ways that you can do this. There are many, many mediums and solvents out there. Um, I've only tried a few personally, so those are the ones I'm gonna talk about, but there are lots and lots out there that you can experiment with. Um, my favorite, we'll start with, are these Chelsea Classical Studio mediums. There's one called Lean and one called Fat. You can see when you open it up here, there are these little bottles. Now, there, I have a couple reasons these are my favorites. So the first reason is that they let the paint dry way faster than if it was just uh, put oil paint on a canvas. So with these mixed in, I just mix a little bit into each color that I use before I put it on the canvas. Um, it will dry in a day or two, sometimes a little bit longer depending on the atmosphere and temperature, but usually in a day or two, paints with these mixed in dry faster. So the lean I mix in when I do my first layer of a painting, and then the fat one I mix in when I do the next layers, the detail layers. Um, this one has more oil in it, so that's why you use this one second. Um, the, also, the other reason is that these smell like lavender. They're a mixture of linseed oil and lavender varnish. So they smell like lavender, they don't smell like turpentine or uh, paint thinner, um, and they are great for having in the studio because it just makes everything smell much better. So really recommend these. I think it's $15 for this little case. These last me for a fairly long time. I oil paint very frequently. You just use a little at a time. So they're small bottles, but they last you a, a fair amount of time. And they're also way uh, just better on the environment and better on your senses. You're not inhaling paint thinner all the time. Okay. So would recommend those. Another option is to uh, is cold wax medium. This is just a, it looks like wax material in here. It's beeswax. Um, you can mix this into your paints. It creates kind of a gritty texture and it dries matte and it also gives it a little bit more volume. Um, so that's kind of a fun texture to play around with. I've done a painting or two with this medium before. Linseed oil is just the oil, it's the carrier oil that all oil paints are made of. You can see, well, safflower oil in this one, but most of them are linseed oil or safflower oil. So you can just add linseed oil to your paints um, and that will thin them out. It will make them dry slower because you're adding more oil, so it needs time to cure, but it is an option for you. You can also make your own medium. Medium is just a combination of two things, uh, which is paint thinner and an oil. So you can combine the uh, odorless mineral spirits in this case, this is paint thinner, um, with some linseed oil, 50-50 ratio or so, and that will create a medium that you can then add to your paints that will thin them out. So you can go that route as well. Another option is Galkid. This is what I used when I first started, so this is a really beginner-friendly one. It thins the oil colors, increases transparency and gloss, and speeds the drying time. Same thing with this one. Thin layers will be touch dry in about a day, um, usually a day or two depending on how thick the oil paint is applied. So this is a great one to start out with. And the last one that we'll talk about is this Liquin Impasto, which is a new one that I have just started using. It uh, just basically adds volume to your oil paint. So it kind of comes out in this gel here. You can see kind of the top of that there. Um, and adding it to your oil paints gives you a very creamy, very thick consistency. Um, and it's great for impasto painting. So that's where the paint is applied really thickly and there's lots of texture. You're usually using a palette knife to do that. Um, and it's really, really fun. This one, you should not touch. This one is more, don't touch with your hands. This one is a uh, skin irritant and it does contain petroleum. So this is the kind of thing where you do need to be a little bit more careful. Again, if you're super concerned about it, wear gloves. I don't, but I just try not to get that on my hands. Okay, and if I do, I just wipe it right off. The last thing that you'll need is Gamzol. So this is a paint thinner. It is odorless mineral spirits, but it is paint thinner. Um, and this does have a smell and it is combustible. So just don't light it on fire. Um, and this is used to, you can use it to thin your oil paints, but usually it's used to clean your brushes. So you have a little bit of this in a jar. And then when you want to switch between different oil paints, you want, rinse out your brush in this, and then you can switch to a different oil paint, uh, oil color. I will get to safety later, but just know that none of this can go in the trash or the, dr the drain, the sink, any of that. It does have to be disposed of correctly. And the so. last thing you need is something to paint on. You have a few options. I will go over them here. The first option and probably the cheapest and most cost effective is oil painting paper. There are several brands who have an option here. Arches is a good one. Strathmore has one. Um, they will all be labeled with oil. So 
you'll know what you're picking up. As long as it's labeled with oil, you can paint with oil on it just as it is. So when you look at this, it looks kind of like watercolor paper. Um, it's pretty thick and it's got a little bit of a texture to it, which I enjoy. Let's see if you can see that texture there. Um, and you can take this out of the pad, cut it up, paint with it, uh, paint on it just like you would a canvas. And it comes in these pads with 12 sheets. And I think this pad was maybe 10 to 12 dollars and it also doesn't take up as much space as a canvas does it's just a little pad like this so oil painting paper is great to have even if you do like to paint on canvases it's good to have some oil painting paper around just for those practice sessions um, and little experiments that you want to do okay another option for you is gessoed hardboard so this is a just piece of masonite board board and it has been primed for you. I like these tanned, these toned ones. Um, I usually tone my canvases anyway, so if it comes toned already, great. Um, and you can paint directly on this because it's been gessoed. So it's been prepped, it's ready for oil painting. And uh, these are also good because they're thin. They're a little bit cheaper than canvases as well. And uh, you can just paint right on it. And it's a very smooth surface as well. So if you have a, a painting style that requires a very smooth surface, you want a lot of detail, these are good to use uh, for that. They come in lots of sizes. And the last one that you're probably familiar with is just a stretch canvas. These come in many sizes as well in the art store. This is just a small one that I have. Um, and these usually are prepped as well. You don't have to do anything to them uh, to get them ready for oil paint. You can just paint right on them. Uh, they do have a little bit more of a texture. You can see that canvas texture there. I like painting on canvases. It feels a little bit more professional. And then your client or you, whoever you're painting for, can just hang them on the wall because they have this little indent here. So you can just hang them straight on the wall. You don't need to frame them. You don't need to do anything with them. They're ready to be displayed. So those are your three options. If you're just starting out, I would recommend oil painting paper. It's probably your most cost-effective uh, option and takes up the least amount of space. Um, and then you can move on to canvases or hardboard, just depending on what your preferences are. All right, and the last thing we're gonna talk about here is a varnish. So uh, you only need really one, uh, and what you do with this is after you're completely done with your painting, you will cover it with a thin, thin layer of varnish. And what this will do is unify all of the colors. It will also help um, protect the surface a little bit and keep it from uh, collecting dust. It just gives it a little bit of a barrier between those colors and the outside world. Um, and it just gives it a nice shine, especially with the, if you pick the gloss version. There are several other versions of this, but you can get a matte version if that's what you want, if that's what your style is. There's a satin version, I just prefer gloss. Um, one thing about this brand in particular, Gamblin, they do a good job. This is, they have the uh, mineral spirits that I use as well. And the Galkid is the same brand as well. So this is a good brand to check out if you're looking for one. This varnish is breathable, so what that means is the oil paint can continue to cure underneath this varnish after it's been applied. So all you need to do before you varnish for these varnishes is for the painting to be touch dry. So just you touch it kind of all over as long as none of the paint is moving and it's not coming off on your fingers, it is ready to be varnished with this varnish specifically. Um, oil paint continues to cure up to six months to a year maybe sometimes after it has been completed. So once you stopped painting on it, it'll take up to a year for that oil to continue to cure and dry completely. And if you varnish with a different varnish, it can stop that curing process and it can just kind of mess up your painting. So this is a good option for you if you don't want to wait six months to a year <laughs> to varnish your painting. Um, it's good for commissions as well because for my experience, um, I want to get my commissions out. People want their paintings. They don't want to wait six months to a year for me to hold on to them, varnish them, and then send them to them. So this is a good option. I would recommend this varnish. Okay, so just to recap everything that we've talked about so far, um, and just to remind you of what you might get if you're just starting out with oil painting, what I would recommend you start with. Um, this might seem like a lot. It will be a little bit of a financial investment when you start out, but it does last a fair amount of time. And you can kind of pick these up one at a time, you don't have to buy it all at once, okay? So what I would recommend are those nine oil painting colors that we talked about at the beginning of the video. I would recommend Galkid as your medium. You only need the one, so this is the Galkid that I, uh, medium that I would recommend, Galkid. You need a solvent, so you, I would recommend Gamzol as an artist safe, kind of least offensive to the nose option. Yeah, I would recommend three to four brushes of different sizes, just whatever you're comfortable with one palette knife, 
a glass palette from the hardware store. You can pick up a varnish. I would recommend the Gamblin Gambar line. You can pick whatever gloss, matte, satin, whatever finish you like, and something to paint on. I would recommend oil painting paper, okay? So that's what you'd need to start out with. Um, plus, you'll need some household items. Okay, some simple household items that you'll probably have around and or that are easy to pick up. Uh, paper towels, always good for wiping off your brushes, cleaning your brushes, um, cleaning up any spills that you might make, cleaning any paint off of your hands. Um, I always use paper, paper towels when I paint. Some people use specific rags. You can sometimes use reusable rags. I would recommend disposable, um, just to keep the mess to a minimum. You will always need jars. <laughs> you do not need to buy jars. Just collect any glass jars that you use cooking or eating. Um, I'm a big pickle eater, so I just save a lot of my pickle jars and I use them for uh, collecting my paint scraps and also collecting that um, Gamzol that I was showing you earlier. A glass scraper is really helpful for cleaning your palette off. Um, I just picked this one up from the hardware store. It was like $3. Um, and when the paint is either wet or dry, you just scrape off whatever you want to get rid of and then store it into a jar. So would recommend this if you're going the glass palette route. And then finally, some masking tape, always helpful with painting. Um, this one is from Blick, but you can get it from the hardware store as well masking tape. Okay, so now we're going to talk about proper storage and safety, which is not a super exciting part of oil painting, but it is important to know. And once you understand these little quirks, it's very easy to follow and really not that burdensome. Um, but it is important to know this so that you're not doing anything illegal or unsafe to yourself or others. <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk about the paint first. Oil paint uh, really cannot go in the garbage. If you have empty tubes of paint, you can throw those away. If you have a little bit of paint on a rag, um, that can go in the garbage. But these big globs of paint should not go in the trash. So what I do is I keep uh, an, a pickle jar, as per usual, in my little paint storage area. And when I'm ready to collect some paint off of my palette, I use my glass scraper, I scrape clean my mixing area, and then I also, once this builds up to a, an intolerable point, We'll just scrape this old dried paint. This is a little bit messy and get that into that jar. So again, this cannot go in the garbage. You're just going to scrape it, put it into a jar and store it until you have the motivation to go to a recycling area or uh, an auto shop, ask politely if they can get rid of it for you. Um, once I'm done with this, I will just clean it off with a paper towel that little bit of paint is okay to go in the garbage, just not the big globs of paint, even if it's dry. Paint thinner is a slightly longer safety brief. This is just a little bit more complicated of a storage process just to keep yourself and others safe, like I said. Um, this is the one, the paint thinner that I use, the Odorless Min Mineral Spirits. This is a little bit better than turpentine. It still does not smell great, and it's really not good for you to breathe in in a closed space. So I am in a studio where I have windows. I always open a window or make sure I have some airflow when I'm painting with this stuff. It does smell and it will start to give you a headache if you breathe it for a long time. So just make sure you've got some airflow when you're working with this, if this is what you choose to work with. Really make sure you've got some airflow if you work with like straight turpentine or whatever you're gonna choose. Um, and then this will not burst into flames if you just wipe it on a paper towel. Just don't have any candles or like open flame around this and you'll be fine. The storage of it, as I was saying before, I have a two jar system. I will go into detail about that now. So I have one jar where I collect my paint sediments and I have one jar where I use, that I use while I'm oil painting. So this is what I use to clean off my brushes. So this one, as I was saying before, is full of paint sediment up until there. And then at the top is a layer of clear Gamzol that is ready to be used next time I want to paint. This one, is murky and full of paint sediment because I just used it to oil paint a day or two ago. So what I'm gonna do next time I want to oil paint, I transfer this into a third, <laughs> it's a little bit of a system, a third nasty cup, transfer that, put the new Gamsol that I wanna use into the jar that I'm going to use for that oil painting, and then I transfer the old sediment into this jar so that it can settle and I can use the Gamsol on top. So. It's a little bit of a system. You'll work it out when you get started. You're a smart person, but it just takes a little bit of practice um, to learn how to do that. So again, like I was saying, you're gonna store up an entire jar of paint sediment here. You're gonna set that aside 
and whenever you feel up to it, take it to the auto shop or a recycling center and they will take care of it for you there, properly dispose it. None of this, this cannot go down the drain. It is illegal for it to go down the drain. It is super bad for the environment. It cannot go down the drain. If you have a little bit left over on your brush and you go to clean your brush, that's fine, but it just can't get poured. Nothing can get poured down the drain, okay? Another thing I'm gonna talk about is linseed oil. Specifically, this is if you start to get into mixing your own solvents or using linseed oil as a medium. This can, I say can lightly because it's super uncommon, but it can spontaneously combust if you leave it on a rag and it's got that warning on there. Um, I have never had a, a problem with this. I don't use it very often. I use other mediums, so I don't have that much of a risk. But um, if you do use this and you wipe just pure linseed oil onto a rag, make sure to soak that rag in some water before you throw it away, and then you won't have any risk of fire. Um, that is just a little preemptive warning that I'll give you on that one. Okay. Now that we've discussed safety measures, we're just gonna talk briefly, briefly about cleanup. Um, we've already talked about how you clean your palette, use that glass sp scraper. We already talked about you cleaning your brushes while we're painting, is you use the paint thinner, um, and then you wipe the paint thinner off on a rag so that you can then go to the next color. Um, when you're done painting, with your brushes so that you make them last and they don't uh, just go to crap on you. Um, you're gonna clean them off in the paint thinner like we were doing before, clean them off really well, get all that paint sediment off there, wipe them off with a paper towel, and then you can wash these in the sink with soap and water. I recommend Dawn dish soap, it works the best, um, and I just usually scrub it into my hand like this and get up a good lather, clean the handle of the brush as well, and then you can do that uh, as many times as you feel like you need to for the brush to be clean. I usually do it twice, uh, do it a little double wash. Um, once you've done that, you can just store them and let them dry and then they're ready to use for the next painting. Okay, so I think that wraps up the introduction to oil painting. I know that was a ton of information. Hopefully it's helpful to you to have this video to kind of go back to if you ever have questions. Um, feel free to put any questions that you have in the comments. I will try to respond to as many of them as possible. Um, I do not know everything. I'll just put that disclaimer out here right now. I've been oil painting for several years, but I still certainly do not know everything. Oil painting has been around for a long, long time. Many people know a lot more than me. So always feel free to seek your own information as well. Don't just take my word for it. Um, and if you have any kind, respectful criticisms of anything that I've said, you're welcome to leave them in the comments. And in the next videos, we are going to talk about different ways to oil paint. We're gonna to start to get into techniques, color mixing, some more exciting things. So I hope you'll stick around and uh, join me for those videos as well. Again, leave any questions that you have in the comments and thank you so much for watching.